the Wellness Hour. An in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, new treatment options for people that are suffering with gum disease. My first guest is an expert on the topic, Dr. Gregory Dilger. Dr. Dilger, welcome to the program. Randy, thank you very much. Nice to yeah. be here. Now, before we get into today's topic, tell me about your practice. I guess uh, you do more than gum disease and more about more than just dental implants. You know, uh, Randy, we do. And I'm very, very proud of my practice. We are a general practice. We do all aspects of dentistry, primarily treating adults because that's where my primary focus is. But I really, really enjoy doing cosmetic dentistry, making people beautiful, giving this, them the smile that they want. And for me, treating the gum tissue and making it healthy is a big part of the cosmetics. Your office though, I mean, you are into technology. Uh, all the new stuff in your office. Tell me about that. Randy, I am. I have always enjoyed high tech, new things. Uh, my first laser I had 15 years ago uh, when I had my digital x-rays put in, computerized x-rays. They flew a guy up from New York because they'd never put a network system in in the country. Before. So you were one of the first guys in Oregon to have that? Absolutely. One really? of the first guys in the country to have a network system for x-rays. So I'd have computers in every operatory with my x-rays on there. Now, you know, we have doctors from all over the country, Canada, that fly in here. And I interview a lot of dentists uh, from all over the country. And, and, and you are the first one I've ever met that uses uh, a, a microscope for just about every procedure. Expand I use, on that. I use my microscope all the time. I'm at the point where I can't even look in the mouth without a microscope. And it's not because I can't see, but it's because I can see so much better with the microscope. But don't all, all dentists are using microscopes on their glasses, aren't all they? All dentists are using, most every dentist is using a telescope on their glass, the little lenses. Okay. And if you look at that, uh, one about this big will be one and a half. You get the ones that look like they're super long, yeah. and those are about 3x magnification. With my microscope, I traditionally work at 10x magnification, and I can go up to 25x magnification. Interesting. So it's a large order of So magnitude. it makes it more precise? It makes me Less able, mistakes? Makes me able to see what's going on in the mouth at a much higher level. Okay, now you have this uh, tooth in a day, or this, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, CEREC machine. Tell me about this. The, the CEREC has been a wonderful uh, new technology, came out. Oh, 12 years ago, and we've had ours about 10 years. And what is it? What, is it? what does it do? It's a computerized milling unit. So it's CAD CAM for dentistry. We will go in and we will prepare the tooth for a restoration. And then instead of taking an impression for a crown and sending it to the lab, we will take the computer with an infrared digital camera and snap a picture. It then comes up on the computer screen, and I will design the restoration, the crown, the inlay, onlay, on that, the patient has the opportunity to watch that. So a crown right there. Crown right there. So is this, aside from convenience for the patient, is it more precise it is, than sending it out to a lab? It is tremendously convenient for the patient. But the reason I started with the CEREC, and I got my CEREC a year after I got my microscopes, is because I was not happy with the restorations I was getting back from the laboratory. I Meaning wanted, what? What does that I mean wanted you're not happy? I wanted something more precise. So they didn't fit properly? They did not fit as well as I wanted them to looking at it underneath the microscope. So these will last longer? Is that the whole so idea? So these should last longer. Okay. When you look at the materials and you look at the porcelain, the porcelain on the CEREC restoration wears so much closer to natural tooth structure than the porcelain we get on the porcelain fused metal crowns from the laboratory. Now I've got a list of questions about gum disease, but uh, do, do, do people still tell you, you know, I hate going to the dentist, or I don't like going to the dentist. I mean, do you ever hear that? You, you know, Randy, I don't hear that more than about once an hour in my practice. Is that right? Yeah. How do they say it? They just um, come right out and say it? It's no offense, doctor, <laughs> but I don't like to be here. Really? <laughs> and we have spent so much time and effort in our practice making the office beautiful. We have saltwater fish tanks to help the patients become more comfortable. We still hear it. They don't like to be there. Really? Now, once they go there, I mean, this is more so with new patients. First time patients. Okay. Once the patients come to our practice, they enjoy watching their fish. And with the microscope, we have little cameras in there, feed a monitor on the ceiling. And as they soon look as, in their mouth. And they get to see that. So as soon as I push the button to bring them back, they're looking directly so up to the monitor. So that's rare, right? I've never seen that before. Not many people have. So this is one of the most high tech offices then you can pretty much get. Yes. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay, good. All right. And, and, and does that mean lower downtime for the patients, less pain involved, things like that? What the benefit to the patient is more precise dentistry. 
dentistry that is more cosmetic and dentistry that is more convenient and comfortable for them. So moving on to gum disease, uh, you know, first of all, let, let's define it and, and how big of a problem is it? Let's talk about how big of a problem it is. Most dentists do not have gum disease. Most hygienists do not have gum disease. Most everybody else in the population has a level of gum disease. And gum disease is primarily characterized by bleeding in the gum tissue, red, swollen, puffy gum tissue. The teeth may become loose, bad breath, a bad taste in your mouth. You may actually see some form of exudate coming out from around the gum tissue. So bleeding gums even from just flossing? I mean, that's OK. Isn't that normal, though, a little bit of bleeding gums? That is common, but it's not normal and certainly not healthy. OK. And many people will have bleeding gums when they brush. You will see people that have bleeding gums when they eat. None of this is normal. None of it is healthy. And it is very similar to if you washed your hands and your hands started bleeding. If okay. You your sounds hair, like an exaggeration, though. Really? It sounds like an exaggeration because that's not common. But my gums do not bleed. All right. I brush, floss, pick aggressively. They don't bleed. On the internet, 17 million Americans wearing an upper or lower denture. Does it all start with this gum disease, with the bleeding gums, with the puffy gums, etc.? I mean, is that what's going on? Is that what kills the tooth? Or People will lose teeth for a variety of reasons, but the only way you're going to lose all your teeth is through gum disease. Okay. It is a huge problem in our country. Okay, help me understand that. Okay, so people watching this, okay, so they have bleeding gums, maybe they're in their late 30s, 40s, puffiness, bad breath, things like that. Where are they headed? What's going on? I mean, what's happening under, I guess, the gum line, around the tooth? Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about the mechanism here. Gum disease is a, disease, is a bacterial disease. The bacteria is harbored in the gum tissue, and it's not removed on a daily basis. Is it an infection, would you call it? It is an infection. Interesting. It is okay. an infection. It, when it's not removed on a daily basis, they proliferate right along the gum line. And that proliferation causes toxins to pour down into the area between the tooth and the gum. These toxins contaminate the tissue. They cause the tissue to have an inflammatory response. That's where you get the red swelling and the increase in bleeding. As these toxins accumulate down there, the body with its bone, the bacteria will attack the bone and destroy it. The body is also constantly resorbing bone but the body cannot lay new bone down. So in the, the tooth starts to get loose? Right. But, but, but why, the, why the bleeding, though? Because of the inflammatory response. The body is trying to fight this infection. It's sending every resource it can to this area to try and fight the infection. So off. the goal is to catch it early, obviously. The goal is to catch it early. Is that tough early. to get people in to do this early? Yes. Do they wait, especially men, wait until uh, it's too late? Every, everybody waits. Not everybody till it's too late but definitely till it's longer than it should be. Because if we can catch this early, and we talk with teenagers about this all the time, uh, how to brush, how to floss, why to brush, why to floss, okay. what to look for, how you can judge whether you're doing a good job. Because it's very, very important to catch it at the earliest stages. So I guess the good news is, is that uh, there's a new laser that we're talking about today yes. that uh, takes care of this. And we're traditionally, I guess, and, or even done today with surgery. They're cutting it out. They're cutting it out. Okay. So let's talk. So about gum disease in traditional has been treated in some very conservative ways where we have scaled and root planed cleaning with anesthesia very deep into the gum tissue. And it is effective to a degree, but does not eradicate the disease. The other aspect for traditional treatment is a cutting surgery where the periodontist, the gum specialist, will actually go in and cut the gum tissue away from the tooth and the bone, scrape the teeth to get all the tartar or calculus off, mm -hmm. remodel the bone, take burrs and actually shape the bone around there, cut off the excess gum tissue, and then sew the gum tissue back down around the teeth. What happens after this is done is, one, there's some, a fairly good level of discomfort for the patient. They're always put on pain medication. They'll do one quarter of the mouth at a time, so you have four different appointments to treat the whole mouth. And when the healing is all done, the gum tissue has moved down the tooth a considerable degree. And when you start talking about aesthetics, instead of nice teeth that come out of healthy pink gums, you have very long teeth out of pink gums with dark black triangles between them. Okay, so I understand this correctly. And I, and I looked at a video on the internet uh, mm -hmm. about this. So 
you have a diseased tooth. You have, uh, uh, so it's scraped off. They cut the gum tissue. This is how gum disease is normally treated, so I understand this correctly. Mm -hmm. They cut it out, put some stitches in certain cases, and then the patient has to heal, mm -hmm. and then their tooth appears longer because they cut away some of the gums. Right. You're saying that now there's with, a laser. With the laser, okay. we have a completely different approach. Our goal with the laser is to eradicate the bacteria, eradicate the diseased tissue, maintain the healthy tissue, and maintain the tissue that has the building blocks to rebuild the gum tissue around the tooth. Okay. So how does it work? I mean, how does it work? When you say eradicate, are you talking about it kills this infection? It actually will kill the bacteria. All right. Okay. That is in the pocket. It will also, the term is ablate or make disappear the diseased tissue. And so as we go down with the laser, starting at the top, we make a very, very small opening around the tooth with the laser, which dissolves or ablates that diseased tissue. We remove it. What if I talk to an expert and they say, which I have, and they say, the problem with the lasers is it burns the gums. An instrument is an instrument. Somebody that says a laser will burn probably doesn't have a laser. Okay. What I found with the laser is it's much more comfortable for the patient we get much better results. Now is this laser though, is it you know, FDA approved to be effective in the treatment of gum disease? Yes, the laser is FDA approved and our treatment protocol is also FDA approved to be effective because they are effective. When we look at what the laser does and the results that we get from the laser, yeah, we end up eradicating the disease tissue, we end up eradicating the bacteria, we allow that patient to heal in a manner so that they are comfortable when I see these patients back one week, the change is tremendous. Really? Yes. We see patients that come in and we start with angry, red, bleeding gum tissue. And if you looked in there, their spouse would not want to kiss them. Okay. After one week, they can smile and nobody's going to notice that they have that disease going on anymore. Now you say, that this is very interesting, that there are people out there that, uh, I guess because they do different quadrants of the mouth or however you put it, they, they've had the surgery. Uh, the traditional surgery for gum disease, mm -hmm. okay? And then they say, I'm not gonna finish this treatment because I can't deal with it. We've had many because patients that come in and they tell us that exactly. Really? They, they've had two surgeries, three surgeries, and they have made the decision that they will lose their teeth before they go back and have another perio surgery. Uh, because it's uncomfortable. It's, it's not a fun procedure. It, it hurts to do it. So this it laser works though. This laser works. But it, it, the laser works it not only works, but it's comfortable for the patient. And uh, that, that's a huge part of it. Because the patients come in and, yes, we use an anesthetic. We do numb you up when we do this. When we're all done, we give you ibuprofen to keep the swelling down. But I have yet to have to give a patient anything stronger for pain medication. There simply is not discomfort. So no afterwards. cutting and stitches, okay. Uh, what are they going through? You say that these, I mean, what do they tell you on, on the consult? I mean, what? What, who's your typical patient with gum disease? What do they go through before they get to you? Good question. Um, we have a couple of different types of patients. One patient that we get is, patient comes into our office, they know we have the laser, they're looking for an alternative because they know they have gum disease. These are patients that will often How tell How do they know me, they have gum disease, by the way? They've been told by all their, their previous dentists. Okay. dentists that they have gum disease, by their hygienists they have gum disease. They've had their mouth probed. These patients will tell me, I've got a six millimeter pocket here. I've got an eight millimeter pocket You're here. You're kidding me, really? They, these patients are very, very aware of what's going on in their mouth. And they they're, do nothing though. They're motivated to keep their teeth, but not enough to go through another cutting surgery. Sure, okay. Because it is painful and they've had So they it hear about the laser. They hear about the they laser. They go to you. And they come to me. And they sit down and they listen, they look at it, and after we treat their gum disease, they're saying, if I had known about this before, I never would have waited this long. Really? Absolutely. Really. Now you say these people kind of uh, become uh, withdrawn from society oftentimes because of their breath, because of their bleeding gums, because of their loose teeth. Well, you, Expand on that. You, you think about our society and so many of our interactions involve close contact with people in talking, it involves eating, and if your gum tissue is red, angry, and bleeds easily, and you're bleeding when you go to eat, you're not gonna to wanna to eat in the presence of other people. Okay. If you have bad breath, you know you have bad breath, 
and you're not going to want to be close to another person, and so you're going to tend to be back and shy and withdrawn. You will avoid those situations where you would be in close contact. Do you think people just don't know their options? I mean, because the people with bleeding gums, swollen gums, they do nothing. Is it the fear of the dentist? Do they think it's more complicated than it is? Because it's the way you make it sound, and maybe it's oversimplified, but it's fairly an easy treatment if, if taken care of early enough. If taken care of early enough, it is an easy treatment. Even with the laser, even more advanced cases are not a difficult treatment for me or for the patient. They don't, many people are not aware that the laser is an alternative. It is a newer procedure, and people have heard about cutting gum surgery, and they've heard nothing that makes them want to go and have that done. Interesting. You know, I've had a periodontist on the show, and I think I told you this, that said, I was bad-mouthing this laser for quite some time. I finally got one, said, and, and I'm going to ask you if you agree with this statement, that they said gum disease was not a sexy procedure. Uh, you know, we didn't like calling the patients the next day. There was a lot of pain. Got the laser. Uh, this Lenap or par Paralace laser, and uh, now, no. not only does it work better, she says it's rare that I ever scrape or do any type, and, uh, is it called root planing root procedure? Planing. Yeah. So it, it, so it works. We, the laser works, and when I went for my training with the laser, we had periodontists that were doing the training. Not every periodontist in the country has adopted the laser. Yeah, I just talked to one yesterday, and I told you, yeah. that said, I don't know, Randy. But those that have actually put their hands on it have actually looked at the They're studies. sold. They are sold. They will not go back, and they will not do cutting surgery. But it's a $100,000 machine or so, isn't it? It is. But what price are we going to put on our patient's health? But you don't have to pay more to do this than traditional surgery anyway, right? No. No, many times, so it many like times it patients okay. will come back and say that we're charging less than what the traditional periodontists are for a cutting surgery. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. I want to know about the process, how somebody gets evaluated, and a little bit more about the downtime, and, and, and what you do for people with advanced gum disease. You're watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're talking about improving your smile uh, with uh, Dr. Dilger. We'll be right back. You're watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're discussing new treatment options for people with gum disease without surgery. With us, we have Dr. Dilger. Uh, okay, so you're using this Paralace laser, and I guess we've established you say that it works. It's it effective. Works. It's FDA approved. Um, but as a recap, what do you want people to know? People, and by the way, do people know when they have gum disease? I mean, most of these people, you say they know they have it. The patients that come to us that have heard about the laser, they know they have gum disease. Other patients that come as new patients to our practice oftentimes are not aware they have gum disease, and so there's an educational process here. But okay. the, me the message I want to get out is that if people treat their disease early, it's easier, with better results, they can have a lifetime of healthy teeth, they can have their teeth for the rest of their life, they can be healthy, they can be confident in a social situation. I mean, after the treatment, do they smile more? Do you see changes in their personality? Absolutely. Uh, people that have healthy gum tissue that have been dealing with the bad breath, the bad taste, and have been self-conscious about it, they have a new lease on life. Really? And their smile is just beautiful. Really? Now, of course, you're a dentist. You think the smile is pretty important. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Without a smile, I think our social situations would really be ugly without yeah. a smile. But if you had to say, I mean, nationwide, uh, patients, they go to their general dentist, they go in for a cavity or a crown or a filling. The dentists are telling them, you know, you, you have pockets or you have gum disease. You say that oftentimes the patients just ignore the advice to do something about it. Is that right? We all, why is that? Help me understand. We all have a tendency to ignore the things we don't want to hear. They don't want to hear they have a problem with their gums. They won't hear it. I mean, does that happen to you where they come in for a crown or they come in for something else? You say, by the way, you have gum disease, and they just say, you know, you mentioned that I use the microscope. So when I do my examinations with the microscope, we are doing a very, very thorough, detailed examination. 50% of that time is spent examining the gum tissue, the supporting structure. Okay. When I get all done, even though the patients have watched me on the monitor, they've heard me talk with the hygienist about what's going on with the gum tissue and with the teeth, when I set them up, the number one question they ask is, are there any cavities? All right, okay. They, they've missed the gum tissue entirely. We, we can talk and talk and talk, but until they're ready to hear that, 
it's very, very difficult. Now, the people, though, that with advanced uh, gum disease, I mean, their mouth's a mess, bad gums, what can you do for them? You know, these are, it's a special group of people. And the best is illustration is I had a patient in just this last week. She had been told she had to have her teeth taken out. They were hopeless. There was nothing that she could do for them. She hadn't seen a dentist in five years. She was very self-conscious about her teeth, did not feel good about her mouth. She was telling me about her social situation, how she avoided that, avoided being with other people in public. Okay. We did an examination, looked at her. With the laser, we can go in and we can save those teeth. Really? Absolutely. By Absolutely. just stopping or killing by, this infection? By stopping the infection, by giving her gum tissue that looks healthy again, that she can maintain by reducing that pocket depth. We can get, make it so that she can maintain it, she can keep her teeth, she can have her smile back. Okay, now, so I understand this correctly. You lose teeth, they become loose first, right? Okay, so you, gingivitis turns into this... Uh, periodontitis. Periodontitis. The, the bone starts dissolving around the tooth, the gum tissue starts receding, and that has to be uh, stopped. So you could kill that infection. We can kill the Now, what infection. about the bone? Because, if, I, you know, I've been told that this laser... It's a good point, and the bone is the critical area, and that's why it's so important to catch gum disease early, because the more bone we have around the tooth, the more solid that tooth is. But is there any be. effect on the bone with this laser? Yes. Okay. Yes. Studies actually show there is a level of bone regeneration. I can't say that we can regrow all your bone around the tooth, but we can get enough bone to stabilize that tooth so, in so most instances. Tooth are, teeth are loose. Sometimes they become solid anchored? Sometimes. Okay. If there's no bone around the tooth, not even, the la not even our magic wand laser can help. But if I've still got some bone around that tooth, if I still have the tissue around that tooth, I can go in and I can treat that I may splint the tooth in order to allow that bone to regrow, but we can stabilize that tooth and you can keep it. Okay, but the main thing here is early treatment is better. And, and, and give us a, a tip, let people at home know. Okay, so how do they know they have gum disease without going to a dentist? What are some of the symptoms? Okay, the first thing, if you get any bleeding in your gum tissue from brushing, from flossing, from eating, and when you brush, don't brush away from the gum tissue and tell me you have no bleeding. You have to brush right where the gum tissue meets the tooth. And if you have no bleeding there, no bleeding when you floss, no bleeding when you eat, then you're in good, pretty good shape. Really? Even a little bleeding is not, not okay? Interesting. If you okay. wash your hands. <laughs> your hands shouldn't bleed. Not even a little bit. So you have this chronic infection. So if you have these things, and red puffy gums also mm -hmm. is, a, is a symptom. Red puffy gums. Unusual bad breath. The bad breath. We you have patients that come in and they say, I have bad breath. My spouse has bad breath. Can you give me something for the bad breath? There are a lot of mouth washes out there to treat bad breath, but all it's doing is masking the bad breath. If so you, you could stop that in its tracks you, with the laser. If you eliminate the disease, keep the teeth clean after eliminating the disease, you will not have bad breath. Okay, good. And the only reason why everybody is not doing this with these symptoms is they just don't know their options. They don't know what's available? Is because, that your take on it? Because people don't do a good job taking care of their teeth early in life, their gums bleed early in life, they have all their life, they feel that that is normal. It's not Interesting, normal. so it could be the stopped. The message is, any bleeding in the gum tissue is not normal, is not healthy. It needs to be taken care of. Okay, and, and, and I, you know, we are out of town, but smokers, they're in a different situation, bad for the gums. Tell me about that. Smokers... Um, I feel bad for smokers because every smoker has gum disease. All right. Every smoker Why has is gum that? disease. Be A simple answer, I guess. Simple answer is because of the hot smoke affecting the gum tissue reduces the blood flow. Okay. And you don't have blood. And that's the main reason why we are, have such a difficult time treating these people because there's no blood flow to the gum tissue. Now to you, told me that, you told me at the, in the green room that smokers may not have bleeding gums at all. Smokers no symptoms. Smokers usually will not have bleeding gum tissue because of the reduced uh, blood flow. They usually will not have swelling because of the reduced so blood flow. So what are their flow. symptoms? Their symptoms are going to be bad breath and a bad taste. And every, every smoker will uh, be using gum or mints or something like that to hide what they call their smoker's breath but it's the bad breath coming from the gum tissue.
Okay. If they're so their teeth will feel a little bit loose, though. So as, as they get progresses, they will get loose teeth. Okay. And loose teeth. But even a smoker is not a good candidate, by the way, for your laser. Is I, that true? I, I wish we could tell you that the smokers can come in and get just as good a results as the non-smokers, but they can't. But if they will stop smoking for a month before we treat and not smoke for a month afterwards, we can help them with their situation. You know, my plastic surgeons say the same thing, you know, with, with the healing process. Is that right? Is that what's going on? Absolutely. Absolutely. So no smoking for a month after, a month before. Maybe this will give them the leverage to start... Uh, because socially, I guess this is a big thing. I mean, if your mouth's not in order, mm -hmm. you're not going to want to, you know, kissing and being intimate and things like that, it, it can be very difficult. Yeah, and you know, that's a good point when you mentioned uh, social and especially intimate uh, areas. The bacteria in the mouth that cause gum disease are contagious. Oh, brother. So, so do you have anything nice to say about, uh, about I guess there's nothing good there's about There's nothing gum good about gum disease. But it can be stopped. I mean, that's but the But we have a good message, message because we can stop it. We can get rid of it. We, we can stop it. We can't cure it. We can stop it. We can control it. And you can have healthy gum tissue for the rest of your life. All right. And keep your teeth. Okay, great. Where does it start? We're out of time. Okay, so if somebody has some of these symptoms, bleeding gums, puffy gums, loose teeth, no matter how advanced it is, starts with an appointment. Is that right? Yes. Do they see you? If give us a call, uh, we come. We'll have you come in, and we'll sit you down, and we'll look at your gum tissue. We'll show you what it looks like on the microscope. We'll show you what the pockets are. We'll look at the X-rays with you, and we won't charge you for this. All right, free consultation. I want to thank free you for coming in, Randy. Thank you very much. Great information. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like more information, or if you'd like to see this interview again online, visit our website at wellnesshour.com, and in the search, just put in Dr. Dilger. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.